Hey my friends, Sean Tierney here coming to you from the studios at theautomationschool.com and in this episode of The Automation Show, we're going to take a look at how to set up Factory Talk View Studio to communicate to legacy PLCs on Data Highway Plus by going through a Control Logics Gateway. But before we do, I want to take this moment to thank all of our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash automation. They get all kinds of freebies and early access to these videos for supporting the show. And I also want to mention that we now have some new swag you can get over at theautomationblog.com forward slash shop, including these t-shirts, coffee cups, phone cases, and more. So if you want to support the show that way, we really would appreciate it. Now with that said, let's go over to the computer and see how we can get Factory Talk View to talk to these legacy PLCs over Data Highway Plus by going through our Control Logics gateway. Okay, here I am. Let me open up Factory Talk View Studio. We'll uh, do a local site edition, local station. And uh, we'll create that here. And let's see, we'll call it tab underscore USC underscore about DHP. And create. All right, here we are. And the first thing we're going to do, you can see here that we have no communication drivers. So we have to pick one. Let's see if we can use RS Links Enterprise. Okay, so I'll right click here, add new server, Factory Talk Links. Now it's called Factory Talk Links. And uh, we'll click on OK. And let's open that up. Communication setup. Okay, we'll go out through the Ethernet, go through our Control Logics rack here. And out the DHRIO. And we're not seeing anything. And the reason is RS Links Enterprise or Factory Talk Links cannot browse through different network types. In other words, it can it has no problem going through ControlNet or going through uh, DeviceNet because ControlNet and DeviceNet are both CIP uh, networks. They use a CIP protocol for all that seamless, you know, routing and bridging. But um, DH Plus is not CIP. It's more like the PC cubed. And uh, so you can't bridge that with Factory Talk Links or RS Links Enterprise. It's kind of sad, but it is, it's just the way it is, right? So what do we do? Well, we can use RS Links Classic. And the reason is, I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. The reason is Factory Talk View, if you have a Factory Talk View license, it will talk to RS Links Classic. Unlike RS View 32, you don't have to buy it with a RS Links Classic license. When you buy Factory Talk View, you pretty much get to use Factory Talk Links or RS Links Enterprise and RS Links Classic for just these situations. Whereas when you buy RS View 32, you typically will buy it bundled with a license for RS Links. So very different, not that you're going to be going out and buying RS-232, although I hear it's still available. Um, but with Factory Talk View, we no longer have to worry about that. It works natively with Factory Talk Links, RS Links Enterprise, or RS Links Classic. So let's set up RS Links Classic first. So let me open it up here. Okay, let me move this down here, get it down here. And what do we want to do? Let's go out through the Ethernet. Let's go through the Control Logics chassis. Let's go ahead and go through our DHRIO. Hey, now we can see channel A. And there's our PLC 5 and 504. Those are the PLCs we want to talk to. So, very similar to what we did with RSV32, is what we're going to do is start by creating topics. These are called shortcuts in Factory Talk Links, RS Links Enterprise, but in RS Links Classic, they're called topics. So I'm going to just right click here, create new DDE OPC topic. Now look, you can see it's giving it a name based on the name of the controller. But notice how this list is empty. I actually had like dozens of topics because every time you download to your controller, it automatically creates a topic. So even though you're not going to use it, it does that automatically. I don't know if that's supposed to be a convenience thing, but to simplify things, I went through and I deleted like 40 or 50 of them so we could see what it looks like by default. Now, I'm going to give this a different name. I'm going to call it PLC5 Gateway 
DHP. Okay. And the other thing I like to do is change the data collection. One second is too slow. I'm going to make it 100 milliseconds. Okay, let's apply that. Yes, I want to update it. So you can see this GUI here kind of looks like RS Links Enterprise Factory Talk Links. And uh, this is really where they get the idea for the whole RS Links Enterprise GUI is from the topic configuration inside of RS Links Classic. Um, let's go ahead and add another one. This one at time we'll uh, create it manually. SLC, I'll call it SLC4. Gateway uh, DHP. Okay. And I'll select the controller here, go to data collection, speed it up to, I wouldn't go any slower than 250 milliseconds unless you have a really, really loaded down D Data Highway Plus. It's common when you have a lot of old panel views on Data Highway Plus for those panel views to use like a scattered memory approach instead of grabbing a bunch of consecutive uh, tags, you know, like N70 through N750, uh, people just grab you know, N7, X, Y, and Z all over the data table. And what that's like is, because each packet has to grab a consecutive number of words, what that's like is it's like sending a bus to pick up one person, right? So if everybody in the world was driving buses and only had one person in it, then all our roads would be clogged, right? And it's the same thing here. So if you have a data highway plus that's slow and you have a lot of panel views on it, it's probably because of that reason. But in any case, if you're doing like starting mode or starting systems with an HMI, I have found that if you go slower than 250 milliseconds, it just feels laggy. It can take a second or two from the time you press the button to something changes. So I always felt like you had to have it under a second round trip. And the only way to guarantee that is to do about 250 milliseconds or 330 milliseconds. But in any case, uh, we're going to set ours to 100 milliseconds because we're just working here on the bench and we can go super fast. So we'll do that and we'll hit apply. Yes. Good. Okay. Done. Now what I'm going to do here is just to prove that RS Links Classic Lite will work with Factory Talk View is I'm going to go to the uh, active topics here. This will show me which topics are actually being used. Of course, nobody's asking for anything right now. So it's completely blank. So let's go ahead and minimize that. We'll go back to Factory Talk View Studio. And let's go ahead and add in, I actually don't even need RS Links, but I can leave it in there. Now, you don't want to have RS Links Enterprise, Factory Talk Links in your project and RS Links Classic in your project if they have similar or they have the exact same names like shortcuts versus topics. So if I had a PLC5 shortcut in RS Links Enterprise and a PLC5 topic, and RS Links Classic, certain versions of the software gets confused about that, and it causes all kinds of issues. Um, I'm not going to go into that in great detail, but trust me, if you do have RS Links Classic and RS Links Enterprise in the same Factory Talk View project, make sure all your shortcuts and topic names are unique. Um, otherwise, it gets ugly, and um, I've run into some people that had to do a lot of rework to their project because of that. So. Um, in any case, I don't want to go into gory details on that. But if you're interested, let me know and I will. Um, with that said, let's add an OPC server. And uh, we'll come down here. We'll just call this RS Links Classic. We'll go ahead and browse for RS Links Classic. There she is. We don't want remote because it's on the same PC. Okay. And let's see here. I think let's go to advanced. Yeah. We'll just go with that. Okay, so let's go back to our project here. And we should make some tags. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a tag folder. I'll make one for the PLC5. And I'll make another one for the SLC4. 504. Okay, great. Now we can input the tags like we did before with the other tag uh, database browser. And uh, let's see here. I need to go out to PLC5 first, change this to RSLogix5. We'll use this one right there. N7, we know we want N750 through 99 because that's what I use for my molding machines in my Factory Talk VUSE course. Here's the thing though, I got to get this shortcut correctly. You see how it says RS Links shortcut? What about RS Links Classic Topics? Let's go back over to RS Links Classic. 
and I'll go to top of configuration. Remember we called it PLC5 GW DHP and then SLC4 GW DHP. So this would be PLC5 GW DHP. Okay, bring those in there. Ba Boom. Come over here to SLC4. Go to the database browser. And this will be SLC4 GW DHP. And I think these files are the same, but just for the sake of argument, I will choose the 504 project. Let's see, 504 SB2 for Studio B. Let's see. And then we want N750 through 99. Excellent. Okay, so I got my tags there, right? So now let's go ahead and create a graphic display. And I don't have a tag mod to like View32, but I kind of like that, that feature of View32. So anyways, let's go ahead and put a... Uh, numeric display in here. We will go browse for our tags. I'll do a refresh folders here. Okay, now we could do direct referencing. We could go directly to the PLC, go online, and actually go directly to N70 or N750 or whatever, but you know, when somebody goes to edit our screen, it'll be like, well, what's N70, right? So that's why we use tags. So let me close this and go here. And we want speeds. Let's see if we can do a filter of speed. Okay, there's our four speeds. Okay, looks like we're going to bring them one in at a time because we're doing one numeric display. Let me go ahead and edit. Well, now in the newer version, of course, we can get to the uh, property panel right over here. So let me uh, change that to a bigger font. The other thing I want to do is I don't want this to be so big. We only need like three places. And you know what? Let me duplicate that a couple of times, three times, evenly space. Well, let's align and then evenly space. And we'll just come in here and manually change it. Mode two, mode three, three, mode four. Okay, so that's the PLC fives. Now let's take a second and put some text up here. We'll just put. Uh, PLC 5 GW DHP going through the gateway. Okay, that's kind of small. Come over here and change the font. Beautiful. Center these all. Let's group it. Let's duplicate it. We'll bring it over here. Uh, you know, I'll probably have more from another video. Oops, what happened? I made a copy. I didn't want to make that many copies. Okay. Let's align top. We'll double click, do some in place editing here. We'll call this SLC4. And we'll do the tag substitution, Control R. I want to replace PLC5. This is like a text search and replace with SLC4 because the programs are the same, so the tag names are going to be the same. Okay, place all. Okay, now. The moment of truth doesn't work. Let's play. Well, let me save my display first. I'll just call it screen one and let's hit play. And you can see it's working and it's updating. And now if we go back to RS links, we can see, let's get rid of this. We can see our active topic list, which is showing us that these are the addresses we're talking to through each of those topics. And with that, that's how easy it is to use RS Links Classic with your Factory Talk View Studio um, and Factory Talk View Site Edition uh, projects to go through your Control Logics gateway. Get out on that Data Highway Plus and talk to some of your legacy controllers. And with that, that's the end of this show. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please give me a thumbs up and a like. And if you know anybody who needs to learn how to use Factory Talk View Studio, please send them over to the automationschool.com. That's where I work full time. That's what keeps the lights on and pays the rent. And um, it's a great course. It's, uh, gee, it was almost 10 hours in length. And uh, we have group enrollment. 
So if you need to roll a bunch of people and track their progress, we also offer that. We offer that to uh, companies who have three or more people who need to enroll. Um, with that too, I just want to say a huge thank you to all our patrons. You should be seeing their names, which side? This side. They should be going up here. I uh, really appreciate their support. If you want to get early access to these videos, free stuff, and all kinds of other cool uh, insider news and whatnot, uh, check us out over at patreon.com forward slash automation. And finally, don't forget about all the new swag uh, designed by yours truly over at theautomationblog.com forward slash shop, including cool shirts like this, cups, phone cases, etc. And with that, let me wish you a very happy, healthy, and great week. And until next time, my friends, peace.